Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our second hot topic talks about the educational minister who has scrapped the 18 years admission benchmark. The Nigerian federal government has reversed its 18-year age limit for admissions into tertiary institutions, a policy it had initially implemented just a few months ago. The move, which had sparked wide, widespread discussion, now allows for a broader range of candidates, including older applicants, to pursue higher education in the country. The decision is seen as an effort to make tertiary education more accessible to diverse groups of Nigerians, particularly those who may have missed earlier opportunities for academic advancement. This reversal reflects the government's aim to address the growing demand for educational opportunities and adopt a more inclusive approach to higher learning in Nigeria. Joining us this morning to discuss this is an education researcher, the leader of Nigerian teachers community, Dr. Peter Oguduro. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure to join you. Good morning. All right. So just a couple of um, weeks and months ago, we spoke about this, where there's the benchmark for students who want to go into tertiary institution, into the university, and they had to be 18 years. And I know one thing we definitely spoke about extensively was um, what were they going to be doing, especially for kids who are probably at 14, 15, and um, they just cannot make it, you know, make the benchmark. Um, but right now that this has been reversed, I want to get your take. How, how did it make you feel and how do people feel about this? Because um, someone, a student had even sued, um, you know, the federal government about this whole benchmark thing. I think, I can't remember what age she was, but not being able to access education regardless of your age. And, you know, that's something that's a no-brainer. But knowing the fact that this has been reversed, what do you think Nigerians or people, especially parents who want their kids to go into the higher institution, how do you think this makes them feel? Well, uh, if you are able to watch the video where we have we had um, wrapped this conversation. I did tell you for certainty that um, it wasn't going to happen, that yeah. uh, it was not an implementable policy mm -hmm. <laughs> because the people who came up with it uh, didn't work with data, mm -hmm. really. So parents definitely are happy that um, we are back to status quo. It does not necessarily mean that we should not um, educate parents as to the need for them to uh, be careful how they rush their children through mm. the education system. Mm. Okay, uh, so now it was not implementable, it has been removed. And the Minister of Education, the new Minister of Education, who kick started his tenure with the removal of this, uh, this policy, is saying that there will be an insight into or a, re uh, a review of the educational policy in Nigeria. And we should go right away into what kind of things that you would want to see there. Because the norm is that you might not be consulted. Stakeholders may not be yeah. consulted, but we still have an opportunity to talk uh, truth to power. What are some of the things that you would want to see if there's going to truly be a review in the educational policy in Ni Nigeria? Well, uh, we have made a point over and over that um, the people who run Nigeria, uh, including those who in our state education policies, uh, people who must recognize that you being the leader doesn't make you an assigned person who understands everything about the system and who can uh, run the system without input from other stakeholders. If they had consulted stakeholders, parents, university lecturers, teachers, school, secondary school leaders, counselors, before they even come up with the idea of 18 years benchmark. We wouldn't have got to the point where we'll be discussing reversal of anything because nobody would, they would have implemented, would have started thinking of implementing a, a new policy that will insist with immediate effect on 18 years being the, the benchmark for uh, the minimum age requirement for people to get into university. So uh, if we want to enunciate new policies in the industry, we must be very careful, we must trade softly. We must consult all stakeholders. And uh, when we talk about stakeholders, very ordinary people in the system should be consulted. Most of the time, the professional counselors, the guidance counselors, the career managers within the education system who understand these things better are people who nev no nobody ever thinks about. 
nobody consults them. Nobody thinks about sociologists, anthropologists, psychologists, even psychiatrists when we are discussing education. Our understanding of education is that it begins and ends with learning you know, biology, chemistry, and physics. But there are things that are even more fundamental than teaching, getting into the classroom to teach children biology, physics, and mathematics. And those things, we can only understand them if we allow uh, the professionals who most of the time the ordinary person in the industry does not see as being relevant. But they, are, they play very critical roles in helping us to run an education system that is truly functional, that we deliver the kind of education we are looking for. Because, uh, you see, as I have always emphasized in conversations like this, we are not in the education system just to help children to acquire certificates, you know, which Nigerians see as meal tickets. Education delivers much more than grades. Education uh, should be giving us new lenses with which we look at life, more progressive, advanced lenses that will make us analytical individuals, make us co come across as people who are truly sensible, reasonable, uh, logical, as people who are, are empathetic and compassionate. Those are some of the, the, the virtues that education delivers. Education, uh, the certificates we take away from the education system is just, as we will say in Nigeria, a jara. That's why in center societies, you know, poor people take um, uh, deliberate steps to do the right things in education, in the education system. They, they try to de-emphasize examinations and grades. Uh, as I always remind all of us, uh, go to the Scandinavian region and see the kind of work they do in, in, in Sweden, in Norway, in Finland. Ed, 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 examination is, is relegated to the, to, to, to the back seat. What they promote is, is good quality thinking, is giving children ample space to learn how to think, to learn, uh, to acquire relational skills, to recognize that no individual can run society alone, that we all have roles to play in moving society forward. So uh, we need to get uh, the right policies in place. And uh, as I'm emphasizing, the people who are calling the shots, unfortunately, most of the time, are people who actually uh, know little or nothing about education. The immediate past minister of education is a lawyer, a senior advocate of Nigeria. We, I'm not aware of any teacher who teaches biology who has ever got the opportunity to run the Ministry of Justice. The current Minister of Education is a medical doctor. He's a nephrologist. His specialty is uh, helping our kidneys to be healthy. Now we have made him Minister of Education. But there are people who all their life, you know, have thought about education, have gone to school to learn, and have done research in the industry, have practiced it, and we have them in their tasks, um, many professors of education in our country, people like us who have done research across the world and who hold PhD in it. Nobody thinks about people uh, you know, who have the right skills. We just use regular politicians to run the education industry. And that's why we are not likely to achieve our development goals, because we haven't recognized education as such a critical uh, tool for development uh, you know, as to want to use it uh, appropriately. So uh, I, I find where we are. Uh, to be a very unfortunate place. We need to uh, have everything and start doing the right things now. All right. So even with this um, policy that is being reversed now, which is the 18-year um, benchmark, the reason, one of the reasons for this, of course, was, you know, concerns for the younger students. Maybe they're less experienced. Um, they're just not ready, the readiness to go into the university. So with all of these universities now, how do you think they can adapt um, you know, the academic and uh, support services that they can give these younger, less experienced um, students that come into their universities? Well, it, it's important that um, we try and um, design, install, and maintain a robust career management system in our universities, a robust counseling system, well-being systems in our universities, so that those who come in when they are not fully mature uh, mentally, uh, and uh, especially in terms of um, emotional health, can find um, resources within the university system, um, courtesy of people who have studied this in psychologists, counselors, social workers, mm. psychiatrists sometimes, who can support them when they have need for such support. What deceased parents a lot of times is the fact that there are some young people who, even at the age of 14, if you put them in the examination hall to write SSC, they will finish with nine alphas, with nine A's. But yeah. the fact that you have nine distinctions is not proof that you are ready to benefit from university education. 
because there are several other things you need to have as an individual to be able to cope with such a complex place called university. It's a place where everything happens. And that's why it's called university from the world universe. So you meet all kinds of people there, and you need to be able to stand your ground and be able to say no to, to the things that are not good for you. So um, if we are moving in that direction, parents should collaborate and cooperate with relevant government agencies to ensure that we consult um, professional counselors, professional career managers, psychologists, psychiatrists, to be on standby to provide help to our children when they need such help. For As I have um, regularly emphasized on shows like this, uh, we are not in school just merely to get the first class because we have seen a lot of people who finished with first class who today have become derelicts in society. And we have also seen a lot of people who finished with third class degree who today have become inventors, people who are running multi uh, billion uh, dollar businesses across the world. So there's need for a balance. Yes, children who are gifted, who need to move fast, to be given opportunity to move fast. But I'm not sure we have a system in place now to be able to even uh, uh, sift those who are gifted from those who are not gifted as to be able to run a fair, equitable and just system. Okay, just very briefly now, because our, our time has run out almost, um, what is your stance on the government's involvement in toddler education? Uh, by that I mean uh, they're leaving everything about nursery schools, everything about kindergarten schools and all that to private individuals. Do you think this is a good move? Or as we want to review our educational policy, the government should also be thinking about this kind of education as well? Yeah, government should be interested in everything. Government, government is everybody's you know, father and mother. And uh, uh, we need to support women, uh, especially those who, who are career-oriented, to be able to uh, return, go to work and, and help their family to put food on the table. And the only way that can happen without jeopardizing the welfare of children is if government uh, collaborates with the uh, private sector to put in place a robust uh, kindergarten system that takes care of children from the time their, their mothers you know, return to work after, after um, uh, doing baby-friendly uh, upbringing for them. So that's, that's the way it should go. Government has a responsibility in that direction. From the, about the age of two, government should put in place robust nursery kindergarten systems that will uh, uh, help mothers to feel confident that their children will be uh, in, good, in good hands as they return to work. Because Nigeria is at a point where all hands must be on deck, actually, right. to improve our productivity. Because productivity-wise, this is not a country that is, that is doing very well, and we need to find a way to deal with that by galvanizing all our energies, including the contributions that women can make. Okay. Ensure that everybody contributes to moving country, the country forward. Right. I totally agree with that because I think it's important that we start to churn out quality citizens and yeah. that's obviously from, from birth if yeah. possible. Yes, yeah. from um, quality education for our kids. This is where we have to wrap it up now. Peter, we want to say thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure having you on our program. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Enjoy the rest. Have a wonderful day, sir. Have a wonderful day. All right, so we're speaking with Peter Obudoro. He is an educational researcher, and we've just been talking about the benchmark that was being reversed for students who are less than 18 to go to tertiary institutions. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with us. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Nyam Gul Thanks for being with us. Have a wonderful day.